let's see. First one was, I think, Dan, that's you. So, Dan, you're up. Sure. Um, oh, it's, spec is editing. Um, yeah, so the first one here is image spec status. Um, so, this is basically picking up conversations. And I think this ties into what Nisha typed in right after, too. I think this is all kind of the same topic. So, feel free to jump in, Nisha, with the specifics as we go. Um, about six weeks ago now, maybe eight weeks, I'm losing track of time. Uh, we had a couple different change proposals being discussed for image spec, uh, which led to realization that the image spec maintainers, uh, the list was stale. Phil um, and Chris at uh, from Linux Foundation um, graciously helped fix that um, situation. There's still a bunch of pending PRs and votes and proposals to add new and replace image spec maintainers a little bit more, but it's been about four weeks since the last change to any of those happened. So I'm gonna revisit this topic. Do we have quorum on image spec maintainers now? And then can we get their opinion on a bunch of the existing changes that are going out? Um, do we think we've waited long enough on those votes? Do we have enough quorum to move this stuff forward? Is that... uh, we have a couple of image spec maintainers here now. So yeah, I'll open this up to you <laughs> or anybody else. Sure. Um, and so I, I think as far as the first line on that is image spec frozen. The, the, if, as much as I can do so, I'll definitively say it is not frozen. Um, but uh, anybody else is welcome to add in why they do think it is frozen. I think I think to your other question of like, how to handle versioning and backwards compat that's that should be navigated um are you are you are you specifically asking about that line or just about the adding maintainers piece of it timing that out um sorry i, I misunderstood i don't think i understood the second sentence you said there but you you start you 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 were going into topics but the, you said that there was a few outstanding PRs about like, or, you know, issues about adding maintainers or replacing, are we, are we talking about putting a timeline on those? Or are you talking more about the, is the spec frozen piece of it? Oh, no, I just mean um, I, that those can stay open for as long as we need it. Do we think we have enough quorum now from the existing changes to actually push some of these things forward now? Um, the problem last time was just there wasn't really quorum at all anyway. And I think there's probably quorum now of people responding to emails and stuff. As far as I can tell, one person stepped down, there was one swap and then uh, one email address got corrected. So now there's another responsive maintainer. Yeah, John Bull has started talking more. John Johnson's right, we got the right there. email address for that. Um, and then Alexa and myself. Uh, Stephen Day could be more involved, but between Brendan Starks and Stephen Day, we do that PR to, yeah, there's a couple of PRs like you said out there. Probably have enough of a corner to get some motion on things now. I know for me particularly, um, <laughs> have been particularly swamped in the last months, but um, I'm seeing light at the end of the tunnel for, for myself getting back into things. All right, so then I guess that ties into some specifics, which, which we could jump into. Um, Nisha, are you here? Is what? Well, yeah, also, I is anybody here. else who's, is anybody else who, like, it's on a call? I don't know if there's anybody, but John, you're the only other maintainer. Stephen Day's been showing up, but like at the 30 minute mark because he has a conflict uh, prior to this. Well, but even in like reviewing issues and otherwise. Uh, well, he approved my PR, uh, so I, I like him. Um, but yeah, I, we could all be slightly more active, I think. Can I be nominally difficult in this and say that one of the things that I'm most concerned about in this group and open source broadly, so you are not alone, is that everybody is on their last nerve and we are starting to build factions. So John, just the way you said, you know, I got, I got my pipe PR approved, so he's a good guy, is just an example of a lot of what's going on across open source today. And I really would love to get us back to 
what is the goal of the project? How are we doing this and collaborating and uh, drawing this community together more in a direct vision toward the next versions of whatever specs need to be put out? That's it. I'm going to be quiet now. Yeah, sure. No, I, I don't think I don't think it's being difficult. I was being mostly facetious, but I, it is evidence I of understand activity. that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, I, I understand that. But I'm, I'm seeing it across more than just this um, community and, you know, what starts as facetious and what starts as, as joking can really quickly become culture. Sure. Have you noticed anything in particular with this community, Sarah? There seems to be, um, <clears throat> there seems to be a discontent um, in some of the, the community space where it feels like you end up mired in a discussion of toxicity when things are brought up as opposed to um, as opposed to everyone <clears throat> actually working collectively toward a good understand it, understanding and negotiated end goal. Um, it, it, we seem to be getting no my way, no my way um, is what I'm kind of feeling. And we're not, we're talking across purposes. So I want, I just wanted to draw that. I'm not kidding when I say this is happening all across open source right now. I think COVID-19 has put us to the edge of our uncertainty capabilities and every last nerve is frayed. So um, we're seeing this in every community I work across. So just recognize it. And I realized it in my video on recognize it, pay attention to it, and then try to avoid it. Yeah, I think I also uh, recognize you're all human. Be, be yeah. friendly out there. And I, I think maybe, you know, I'm not sure how much is worth tossing on top of that, but I, I think maybe what we're experiencing and it's what we kind of were hashing out, you know, six weeks ago, trying to come up with a working group idea is that the OCI kind of reached the end of like the easy stuff, like, like oh, we're standardizing things. We kind of all, our, our tools already speak these languages, these APIs. And now we're kind of crossing into like, hey, we have a ton of interesting ideas that come from different perspectives on how we attach this bit of data to an image or how this tool interoperates. And I think, um, you know, I think we all recognize that the companies we represent probably will go in some different directions, you know, as far as implementation. But I, I think Sarah's point is well taken that that it almost is even a more important time in the OCI than ever to figure out how to work together on things we can do collectively, even as we kind of figure out our, our vendor niche, you know, as far as where we're going with image signing or or other areas that, you know, have very, you know, definitely different ideas about implementation. Um, so I think that's part of where we are in a sense in the OCI. I, I think that there's an, another um, force that seems to be tugging and that's the, you know, the, the unopinionated uh, feel of the specification. Um, it's almost like, you know, uh, things are made out to be like, oh yeah, this would be nice to have, but we don't want to, uh, you know, restrict our vendors from implementing something else that might be interesting. So, because you're having that conversation, everything seems to be like just kind of stuck there. And that might be some cause for the tension. That, that ch change, especially on something like a spec does make people averse. Like people are often averse to change unless it's their change. <laughs> um, but it, to, to Sarah, to your point also, it's, it, it is something that I, I feel like if I'm not saying it to other people, then at least I'm saying it to myself, that it, there's always this like push to, to remind people that we're all, we're actually, at least in this project, sitting on the same side of the table. Um, and 
that humans very naturally will make an us versus them. And thankfully, it's not the first time, even in the OCI, that we've seen this. Um, even you know me when I was working at Red Hat, Red Hat and Docker had a lot of head-to-head -head nonsense. Um, it was a constant thing to address this and like maintain working together as humans that were working towards a common goal, despite whatever was going on there and some of the personality personalities that were involved. Um, so that's fun. Uh, it's it's really like patience and knowing that we're hopefully working together on a collective goal and not trying to uh, in, in like so doubt about what the other, other you know, anybody else is doing. So uh, it's a good reminder. Um, Speaking of collective goals. Yeah. Uh, I think we are, uh, you know, the, the topic du jour seems to be like this manifest layout thing. Uh, I know Dan has, um, the one specific proposal that he's talking about, but um, there are three other proposals out there and there's a lot of, um, uh, the, the, the three proposals that had been sitting around for a while has been leading to folks making bets on which one will win. And I would rather we coalesce on like a, a common layout that will um, that will address all the requirements that folks are bringing uh, to the community. Um, just to just to be clear about um, my propo my proposal as that was one of them. Um, I don't think anyone should consider it right now. Um, I think that um, there are in subsequent discussion, there are fundamental issues about garbage collection and reverse links that are complicated, and um, uh, and they, I, I think they affect um, all of the proposals that change the way that links work in the registry. You know, this is there a fundamental, um, you know, there's, there's a fundamental changes, and that, and that we we shouldn't just kind of. It's not about the format; it's about the structure and what what's possible or not possible with garbage collection and um, circular references and so on. I think this is um, so. I don't recommend anyone read my proposal now. That's why I have not updated it. Um, and um, I think we've made some progress on um, on some of the restrictions that garbage collection and reverse links imply for the overall structure of it. And we've made some other you know short-term proposals that address those but it's it's kind of um i think that the, the, from the generic proposal point of view it's, it's there's still work to do to make anything that seems sensible and um and, and i think you know these are kind of fundamental things about how we implement registries that we just there are things that are just not implementable um and we need to be careful about these things Hey, Justin, if the proposal is in a state where you think it's not like reviewable, could you update it, update the top to have some text to say like, this is a draft work in progress, don't, I think that would, it, that would help it, it, other people it, it who stumble a, across it. It was only ever opened as a draft PR, but yeah, I, I can, yeah. so, I mean, but I'd say it was only ever intended to be a draft for discussion, but I can, I mean, I think I, I wanted to um, write up more of the issues because they're generic and don't just apply to that proposal, they apply to all the proposals. Yeah, I've just gotten bit by that before where I read a doc and form opinions about a doc and then find out that that was like somebody's Friday night, like I threw this against the wall and it didn't stick and I probably should have said that it wouldn't stick type thing. So uh, yeah, no, not no, your no, doc yeah. in particular, but but that sort of thing is a trap that can bite people and I've found, I've, I've found that to be the case. I have a drawing to share if anyone is interested. Is, yes, I'm interested. I, I did just also uh, want to say on the, on the image, image spec frozen thing and like topics worth pursuing. Um, and this almost goes into the, the 
proposals and working groups, which hopefully might segue into what you're saying, Misha, is in the past when we were either getting ready for a 1.0 release or otherwise that we end up setting up out of band um, times to either effectively do grooming, but just to work through different topics and otherwise, um, and kind of leave this leave this call for big topics that kind of bubble up and not easily agreed upon. Um, kind of in that same vein, would would folks either be open to the idea of setting up a time for say image spec or otherwise, just to start going through kind of grooming and um, kind of like rekindling the fires and direction of, of that project almost as its own working group. Yeah, more more attention and affection for image spec plus one in any Cause, form. Cause because I mean, like some of these topics, even just now, I'm like going through and seeing that I can close. Like I just closed out actually like four things, just because they're they were stale and there were things that I'd opened up and otherwise. But just like that kind of like getting momentum sometimes takes a little bit of crowdsourcing it. I think it's also fair to say that uh, for the image changes that are required, there's some hit to the distribution API, so we'll probably need sure, to sure, sure. associate. Yeah. Okay, I mean, that's, I'll take that as an action. Um, and obviously I'll, I'll, I'll post it to the dev list and otherwise, but um, just you know the, to keep an eye out for that. All right, sorry, Nisha. Sorry, I'm Mike Spoyne that yeah. if image spec changes need changes to the, the distribution API, then they're not just image spec changes. And so how do we yeah. coordinate those across different things? Because I think that's part of the, Issue with these changes is that they're not really image spec changes at all. They're global changes to how registries work, and, right. and and you can't they can't be understood in isolation. It's yep. a, and, and so some some of those very much should be tagged, and I think that I think that's broadly the the concern when folks are wondering if things are backwards compatible or if a version change is enough to track it. Um, so there's there's a good cut mark, you know, to figure that part out. But I, I'm just talking about even kind of breathing life into the project enough to where that, that's, an, that's a healthy enough conversation so folks don't feel like there's hand waviness that it's gonna be breaking changes or backwards incompatible, but actually a very familiar conversation. So I'm not opposed to having that conversation, or at least getting people re-familiarized. So let this me uh, back, uh, sorry, let me back up for a minute there. Uh, Vincent, uh, are you proposing that this whole conversation about uh, manifest be in the scope of the image spec work, working group? Or? No. Not necessarily. Um, I'm just saying in, in these kind of like discussing these proposals and how like how far reaching they might be, it's kind of rekindling life. And to some extent, we have now a few conversations like, you know, small tweaks to the image spec or small tweaks to the distribution spec or broad reaching, you know, working group type things. Um, basically for the health of those kinds of working groups or even comfort with knowing that a small change is not going to have cascading effects there that nature of conversation implies that you have a healthy enough momentum within any of those subcomponents or teams of maintainers of those subcomponents that can discuss it right now and i think that's one of the challenges with like the staleness of the image spec is that uh, it's gone so stale right now that we actually have to get some amount of life back into that project so that, that, that those kind of working groups or proposals or whether something's a breaking change or not, uh, that there's like fire back in that kiln again so that that's an actual productive conversation, not just like, I don't know, it's working right now, don't touch it, <laughs> which I think is where we're at. Um, so related in for your for something like the manifest proposal to be a healthy conversation and productive conversation, things like image spec have to have life back in them again. That's the point. 
Do you think that's a precursor to this conversation? I think it has to be. I think that can be fairly parallel. People, people can act, act actively tell me I'm wrong. But. I, I, I don't parallel, think wrong. parallel sounds good. Yeah, I, I, Vincent, I think you're you're right in that. But when this group got going six years ago, there was a lot of energy here. There was a TOB that was very active. Each of the spec working groups was very active. There was lots of activity, but as those first two specs kind of came over the finish line, the TOB hasn't exactly been active and those two spec groups haven't been very active, just the third spec group. So we're now back in a situation where folks want to resurrect the image spec discussion. And that's, that's rightly going to take time, but you need the, the, the groups to be active again so that folks know how to have a specification discussion so that things don't, I mean, Justin's example right now is a pretty scary one. The idea that somebody might step in and start trying to play with an image spec and break all of the hard work that was just finished by the distribution spec work is, you know, may, may, there needs to be a few more people kind of getting back into the role of doing this work together. So yeah, everything you just said, Vincent, I'm in. Right on. Okay, so that, that, that was that topic. Sorry, Nisha. Um, diagrams. Is this well, leading into your topic now or is this re related? No, this is leading into my topic. Actually, um, uh, when I'm looking at the diagram, I think this is also related to Dan's topic. Is that done? Sorry, is it done? Well, I think the it's kind of related. The A twenty eight sounds like it's all related. Um, yeah. So I I uh, I made this, and um, I can actually find it. So I made this um, to understand what all the proposals are. Um, this one really looks like the reference or relation. Um, proposal that um, Dan had put out. Um, but uh, what I want to try and figure out is what are the require what is what are the requirements for this? Uh, because it seems like it, it covers like the the first one, the the ability to refer to something or to link uh, one manifest to another manifest and also allows you to list out you know what are what are the what are the things that are referencing this manifest but there seems to be like other requirements that uh, we're not we're not talking about or we're slightly talking about but i don't have a good handle on it so I thought I'd open that up for this, like just for consensus here. And I know it's been going around in um, all the different PRs, but that's the problem. It's all going on in different PRs and I don't think they're like really talking to each other. So. <laughs> Thank you. That's, so uh, before we get, correct. yeah. So before we get too much into like the, the fields and stuff here, I think, to, at a high level, it, if I might try to characterize it, I think the, the biggest difference between the two is that between the two options without not talking about Justin's um, is that this one aims to be the minimal change to accomplish those requirements and kind of a, a thought experiment to see if we can do it without a new schema version, without a whole new version, a major one. Um, and that's what we need the feedback from the image spec maintainers and the distribution spec maintainers for. Um, if we can't do this without bumping the um, major version, then you open the other can of worms of, okay, our, we're, we're going to make a whole new major version. And there's tons of other requirements that people have uh, that we can do at the same time with larger backwards incompatible changes. Um, 
And I think that's kind of the big one, the big difference in direction, if I could put it simply, is can we do this, uh, get that refers to requirement done without changing major versions? Should we? Do people think there's usefulness there? Or should we bump the major version and fix up everything at the same time? So to me, this sounds like a, uh, like a minor version bump, adding, uh, adding a new type call, uh, adding a new key called reference. So what, what I took away from all of the discussion is that this reference thing covers, you know, this ability to link um, uh, what I keep calling uh, auxiliary blobs to the image manifest. What it doesn't cover is um, the ability to link many different images together. Uh, in some kind of like, you know, uh, something that says that, oh, I, I'm an image, but I need, in order for me to run, I require this other image. So it doesn't cover a dependency graph, I guess. Uh, if you're talking about a high level application that has uh, uh, many different images working with it. Does that summarize? I mean, uh, does that make sense to folks? I think that's I an arguable see. point. It would you'd have to get into the details of the implementation. Yeah, no, uh, it's a high level point. I, I'm not talking about implementation there. Uh, my feeling is that this change, the change that allows the uh, the Merkle tree linking. Uh, I think that's a reasonable change to make because this is JSON and references uh, at the end of the blob. And so if uh, a client a client can, you know, go further down the blob only if it's looking for a reference and otherwise will not touch it. Um, what's your garbage collection model for this? Um, so it seems to me that um, when you have, it's almost like uh, when you delete the link, actually it doesn't really have a garbage co collection model, does it? It's almost like you'll have to um, I think delete. The GC inverts. Once you do the references, the GC arrow kind of reverts the other direction. So when you delete the image, you can delete all of the things that were pointing to the image. Everything has a reference point to the image. It, it's, it's kind of a loaded question, I think, because there isn't a garbage collection model in, in any spec, right? This is all implementation details, and we're all trying to walk on eggshells to avoid breaking any of those implementations. So I mean, this is a change to the data model. Um, if we're going to start mandating garbage collection models, I think we need to rev the distribution spec pretty soon. Distribution, well. right. It, yeah. This is unrelated to GC, I think. I, I think it's not that it's, we're not trying to mandate any garbage collection. I think we're trying to recognize that the, the specs have a certain amount of usage and a certain amount of functionality. And how do we propose changes that support those capabilities? and make it realistic for the services and the products and the projects to be able to implement that in a way that can be achievable. Um, like this is the, the canonical, the catalog API problem. Like we need to prove out that these things work. What are the impacts of it? And is it actually achievable? Um, which is kind of the point I thought was the working groups is there's some really simple, simple changes. You know, we could talk about the annotation one has always been a simple one to me. Um, because there's no real expectations. It's a communication path with no expectations on either side. And then there's this stuff with the references, which is a reverse index, as Brandon was just talking about. I mean, it just doesn't get much more impactful to the various specs across the board than to do something like that. So I, I think that's the part of what we're trying to do with the working groups is to figure out what does it mean to do this? How far can we go? How far do we need to go? 
and then validate those, do some uh, do some you know, um, implementations, get feedback, iterate. And then once we actually have solid feedback and solid confidence in it, then there's a PR to be made to wherever it makes sense. Would it make sense to um, add all of these uh, manifests to index.json and then the garbage collection model is remove index.json and all the manifests within it? The challenge you run into doing that is that you often want to add more data to your image after it's already unpublished and that means you're modifying that digest on the index for everyone. Yeah. Are you talking about an image true. index? The index.json is a file inside a on, on disk format. Yeah, but if you were to put all those objects in there for GC into the index, that just kind of means that every time you add another signature, you're modifying that digest on the index, which might break other workflows that are relying on that digest. Yeah. So I think I think the point is that there are multiple options for garbage collection. Certain registries might want to aggressively garbage collect. Certain registries might never want to garbage collect. And there's certainly use cases for both. I think if the sticking point is how is garbage collection supposed to be recommended, like I don't think we I don't think it should be in the spec, but we could come up with some common recommendations for how you could handle garbage collection, but it is ultimately up to each registry yeah. which one they want to do with their with their service, right? Um, I think I think this is it. I like these diagrams a lot. I, I don't know what this Miro tool is, but um, uh, unfortunately, unfortunately, it's I cannot share the diagram. Um, just like export so it, I'm, yeah. Yeah, There's I'll, a I'll right just there. have to export. Screenshot. <laughs> Click the blue button. What does it do? The big blue, big blue button. Where's the big? Oh yeah, the share. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, no. I don't know. Um, so but I, I, it, it's. I'm just wondering. Like, it, it's interesting, even if you're exporting it for a discussion, because that it, it's. So one of the things, even it looks like you had a couple other pages in this, but uh, to to kind of pull pull the discussion back up a little bit is um, with some of the different pieces that are going on. And I think this is where it kind of like the high level view again. We had the call a few weeks ago with the, the TOV about like how best to kick off different working groups um, and you know effectively see whether or not things are you know breaking changes or whatever, kind of like how what's the story or how are the use cases that they work together. Um, and really, since sometimes these things do touch on like image spec and possibly distribution like API and otherwise, um, how do all these things relate? And I think truly one of the things that we're, we're, we're probably kind of stumbling around here is that there are existing efforts that have been going on like in you know, the artifact, artifact repo and you know, various discussions and design pieces there and whatnot. And then also like in PRs and other places, and they, there is a lot of overlap and like the diagrams like this, I think would, would make good if we had like kind of a tracker for um, effectively working groups or proposals that have been going on, even if we have now new established vocabulary because of recent meetings um, that we can at least see like, oh, this is already being worked on and here's like links to the projects or links to the repo, links to the issues that are, are discussing this so that folks can get involved or at least see that like some of these things are probably overlapped or somewhat redundant and already being worked on. Uh, I think this makes me think it should go into kind of like an overall working group and proposal tracker board so we can see how these things are related. Okay, agree. I'll stop sharing. Oh, yeah, that's good. So just to come back up, <clears throat> up a level one more time, I think re really the only major difference in terms of the references part is whether it seems feasible to do as a minor version or a new major version. 
Um, am I mischaracterizing anything there? Well, it hits two specs, and and you're going to need the, uh, right. the image maintainers to be make that decision, right? They need a quorum. Right. I yeah, definitely need two specs. I, I understand that part. Yeah. If if there's this was the right solution, which still still to be determined, uh, I think extending the, uh, the you know the descriptor to have a references because it's being inherited by the other types would would probably be a good way to hit, would do this, especially if it's optional. But as soon as you start talking about garbage collection requirements, that's not optional. But we can handle that in the distribution spec. It's yeah, interesting. Yeah, I, I think there's still some optionality in there because any registry that doesn't implement the garbage collection for whatever spec we have is going to look at something like that. And it's going to see, okay, I've got the tag pointing to this index that's pointing to this manifest. And then there's other things just hanging out here that has nothing because it doesn't know what a reference is. And so it's just going to delete that other thing. So the worst case, it's just going to get deleted. Right. That, that, so makes, it unusable. that, makes, that makes it unusable. That, I mean, it's like for the user. I mean, I, it's like it's yes, technically conformant with the spec and then we delete it again immediately. It's not helpful for, for any user of this at all. It, it doesn't help the user, but it means that this user isn't going to break a registry server. Yeah, but it doesn't, add, it doesn't add useful functionality to the user, which was the point of doing this. I mean, yeah, sure. I mean, yeah, sure. You could add this to the spec, but it's if it's not useful and it can't interoperate, then we're not. I mean, what, what's the? I think we're going to the interoperability right. part, though. It's that it's that you've got a registry server out there that if they don't implement this spec. The worst case is that the registry server is still going to be up and running and the user just can't use that registry. They'll have to pick a registry that does implement the spec. But that's exactly the situation that the ICI is here to make sure that doesn't happen again because we want to be able to interoperate between registries because that's why we're working together. Yeah. This so, so I want to come back one more time. Of the working groups so that we can work through these things and we can do parallel working groups. If we can't agree on one way to do reference types, then there could be parallel groups. I mean, I think the point is, is that this is something that just needs time to incubate um, and hopefully done in you know collaborative ways so that it can work across registries because that is the point that we're all here. Um, and then with that, then we can decide, you know, maybe niches diagrams are great ways to kind of facilitate the comparisons. Um, so I think that is the point that we were trying to do with the working groups. So, so just to come back one more time, because we're bouncing back and forth between the garbage collection specific requirements and then what are next steps? It sounds like, I haven't heard anybody say they think that this needs a major version. Is it, is that correct? Well, does it need a version at all? I think is part of what you're getting at. Like, can we just commit something to the existing release version spec? That's what I think that you're proposing. No, no, no. I'm, I'm, no, uh, let me alleviate that. I'm not proposing we merge any PRs right now. These PRs are early starts to see if we think there is enough proof that we can do this backwards compatibly to go work out the rest of it. Probably there's an existing the version make that. Dan, I think probably this is the wrong place to make that decision. Sure, but yeah. it, 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 I think it's one of those that how best how best can we experiment with that before actually pushing it out there? And you know, just that's that's the part where in the past we've we've leaned very heavily on some aspect most aspects of the OCI being kind of a trailing spec of what folks are already doing in the wild and saying, actually, here's the lessons learned, um, rather than de designing something that we later find that doesn't work well in production. So in, in the past, we've, we've relied on being kind of a trailing spec where somebody else has already done the experimentation and figured out some basic lessons learned. Sorry, Mike, what were you saying? Yeah, uh, you're, you're asking for a question that's not quite, uh, you know, the scope of this meeting, making right. a decision on whether it's a major release change or a minor 
point. Oh, I'm not asking for a, you know a concrete decision, no vote or anything like that. Like, do we think there's we're, are we seeing any hard blockers at this stage to you know stop and go stop doing this? It's not going to work completely. Don't even bother trying, or go put in the work to do more validations and experiments and try this kind of thing. Yeah, I think as we chatted the other day, I think we need some yeah. test cases at the mm -hmm. distribution level to check it across the registries and find out some hard details on whether, you know, your your reference proposal would, you know, and some more test case definition work, like Nisha was saying, she's not sure if this covers her, her use case. Um, so I think we need a little more, you know, work on the definition of the use case um, and then some work on the, de you know, on the definition of test cases at the distribution just for experimentation purposes. And, and that's probably gonna need a work group going to make sure that we've tweaked the right clients and we've tweaked the right servers to, make, to see if the, we can make that work. And then on the other side, you've also got, Steve's got a great, you know, his own, uh, you know, proposal. Uh, and we need to do analysis on that as well. And without the right OCI, you know, image maintainer votes, you know, how do you pick one or the other? Well, you write test cases and you, and you get together as a group and say, which one's better? Right. I think as a group, it needs to be done so we can come together. No, Steve's proposal is great. I, I have no problems with Steve's proposal. I think the, the question is just, do we need a new major version and or do oh, we not? Major? And do we want to try to do this without a major version, I guess? And it's not either or, if you look at it that way. If it's, if it, if it's, if it, if it's, if it's not backwards right. compatible, I think you would need a, a major version. If it is and, backwards compatible, then... And I'd what? prefer not to do a major rev. Me personally. Yeah. <laughs> I agree. What, I agree. what do we mean by backwards revs compatible? Are uh, yeah, that, that's yeah, I was, I was hoping to, I was hoping Justin would say, let, let, hold off guys, I'm gonna do a major rev. <laughs> let's let's push my idea a little further, but that'll be a ma the major rev and whatever we do in the, in the meantime would be a minor rev. Um, what do we mean by backwards compatible yeah. here? Cause I think there's, you know, you've got two pieces that are interoperating here and does it mean that the server isn't compatible with client, client is compatible with the server or I guess ask them for some definition there. What, what is the scope? There would be one scope for the images themselves, the containers, whether they can run or not, right? When distributed to the registry, pushed and pulled from the registry and run on that machine, right? That's one. And, and, and then across multiple versions of those registries and multiple versions of those clients, right? You need to be able to go backwards on both sides, the, the servers, the registries, and, and the container images. Yeah, so there is, I, I do have a basic table. I tested a small matrix of those things and put the results in here. I didn't get any other requests for other ones to try. Um, well, definitely like, it, I'm, this is not exhaustive, but I, it exhausted my creativity of things, <laughs> different test matrix, matrices we could try. So there's some due diligence done here, um, but I just didn't get much feedback or anything on other stuff to go try in terms of, did this client ignore this field properly? Did this registry ignore this field properly? Nothing blew up despite my best efforts to blow something up. I, I think we're, the piece that we're getting overly focused on is some text in a JSON document and thinking that's the extent of it. Um, I, the purpose of putting the text in the JSON document is to provide some behavior that users would have as expectation from these services. And to put an annotation in, it's just passive. It goes back and forth. If some registry decides to index that, great. That's a great value add. Um, but I think when we're talking about something like references, well, they're useful if there's an API and to be able to get the information back out, that's, that's something that needs to be additive. There's an expectation that if that API is there that they can get the data out. Um, and if a registry is accepting some piece of content that has this passive property on it that is on a version that may or may not be supported because of how a registry implements versioning, what does that mean? So if we start pushing something in that doesn't have a tag, let's say, and does it is it expected to stay there? Is it just disappear? Um, I think that's the part. Like I, I don't think the the major piece to this is the elements that show up in some schema or another. It's the behavior that we're talking about. I think it's also I, important to point out, Steve, that your your idea was talking about uh, you know a new 
type, right? It wasn't an OCI image type change. It was a it was a it was an image for for your artifacts, right? An OCI artifacts image type, which would in fact be different. So therefore, no backwards compatible issues, right? I don't know if everybody yeah, caught that. I mean, the distribution specs a little, has a little different. If you're just going to scope the fix for the uh, you know for artifacts as opposed to scope a fix to yeah, to cover OCI images v 1.1 or whatnot. But I guess kind of trying to think back to what do we mean by backward compatible? If if the artifact spec was to try to push the registry, saw the registry didn't support it, and just fell back and said, well. I can't work with that registry, so I'm just going to fall back to the old behavior, not pushing artifact. Would that still be backward compatible at that point, or are we saying that it has to support the newer feature for us to even consider that it's compatible? And then you get into this chicken and egg problem where both things have to be upgraded at the same time. It sounds like forward compatibility, not backward. Yeah, yeah and that that's why I'm pushing back when I hear that it's, it's not backward compatible if the if the registry server doesn't support it because it's the client just know, hey, the registry doesn't support it. So we are backward compatible by just not pushing the artifact out there. And so even though- Which, which points it's out it's a point new, release. It's not, you, you can't, yeah, you couldn't introduce a forward requirement and not yeah, but, rev so, the, the spec. Yeah. yeah, but I mean, it can be a completely new object type, but since the registry doesn't have the API to push that object type up there, you will just say, hey, we don't support that. And so the client falls back to an old behavior and. Therefore, you are backward compatible at that point. Yeah, exactly. I would, I would yeah. agree. I, I would kind of, I kind of think about it as registries have three choices for what to do with these new image manifests with references. They can, you know, they can take it and they can accept the reference and track that. They can reject it and throw an error. Or there's this like third option where they take it but just ignore the reference, which. I would say it's probably a bug because they're not tracking all of the things that the manifest is expressing. And so, I, but I don't think that third option necessarily means it's breaking backwards compatibility. I think that it's a, yeah, this is a new feature. A so there's gonna have to be changes. I also don't even consider that a bug. If, if we know the registry may not handle that field, and that it's just not going to do anything special with it, then we can use that as part of the spec. And so that's kind of when we look at the, the data field that we've been talking about of how to add an extra data field into the manifest. That's relying on some registries just don't know what to do with it, but it doesn't matter. It's just extra data that gets ignored. That one's a little bit more complicated because it was captured as a reserved element and it wasn't scoped very well. So that one's a little bit more nebulous to deal with. Um, it does have the ability to really impact services with an expected behavior of what's used today. So I try to avoid the data one just because it's wrapped in a, in a reserve spot. And ultimately, it doesn't fund them. It in and of itself doesn't solve any of the problems we're trying to solve here. So it, I think we have got more difficult problems to solve outside of that one to actually achieve any of the goals that we're trying to discuss here. So I probably would just leave that one alone for a moment. The, I think the idea is what, if you push something to a registry with a new element, first of all, is that element, where, where is that element defined? Is it in a 1.0 spec that was already cut and released? Is it a 1.1 release? When would that 1.1 release be done? Um, or is it, you know, what is the expectation there? And this is kind of the thing I was bringing up on one of the, one of the discussions. If a customer calls and says, hey, I'm pushing this thing and it disappeared or it doesn't get accepted, um, what is it that we're supposed to do with them when they call, tie up support, have an expectation, it's a big paying customer or otherwise, and they could say, well, it's in the spec. Do you, do you, do you conform to that spec or not? I mean, it puts us all in a very awkward spot, which is part of what the specs are supposed to provide is that stability. So it's none of this is about spec is frozen that we can't do things. Like we're all discussing here, all of us want to innovate on the this, this space. How do we do it while providing stability to our users and ourselves? I'm biased because I sent the PR, but I think the data PR is in fact an example of something that's really easy to merge and not complicated or, or, or mired in, in technicality. It's, it's like, 
in, in my opinion, that is an example of something that is very trivially backwards compatible uh, and is an easy yes for me. But if you're saying that is more complex than something else, I think we are operating under different models of how it, backwards it's an easy. I, I agree it's an easy yes, but the question is to what end, right? <laughs> Just adding an additional field that doesn't solve the problem, you know, it might be. But we want to make sure it does solve ready. some problems, but it is a different it problem does solve some problem. Than, yes. than we were talking about for the past 55 minutes. Yeah, I agree. It, yeah, it yeah. solves a problem. <laughs> that is just scope what I mean by complex. It's complex because it was a reserved field and now we're defining. That's what makes it complex. The actual use of the data element is a different problem in that it, it can bloat registry data that we're caching and, and so forth. It's nothing, it's all code. What am I, you know, it's, it's just code, we can change it. It's just a matter of when and where and how and why should we change it. So I'm just saying the data field is more complex because it's it was a reserved element that we're trying to find as opposed to, and even if we approve that one, it still doesn't solve the problems we're really trying to, to it doesn't solve the bigger problem of what we're trying to do here. It solves a piece of it. So maybe I'm confused about the mental model of what happens when things get merged and the versioning and everything like that. Like a version 1.0 has been tagged and cut on that spec and that's immutable now. <laughs> There's a SHA of it somewhere floating around. That's immutable. You can't make a change to that. That's version one. Stuff can get merged into this spec. It doesn't actually become a spec until the new spec maintainers would tag that with a new official thing, either 1.1 1.3, 1.7, 1.11, something like that. So just merging it doesn't do anything until the spec is released with a new name and number. Is that correct, correct. in how this works? Okay. Yeah. So, so I don't think anybody would be confused. I, I don't know if that answers your customer question because customers don't understand the specs anyway, I, if most people here rarely do, um, myself included. But I think like that would be like, if you implement version 1.0 of the spec, that spec cannot change on you. That is frozen in time, it's defined. New features would be a new minor version and registries would implement that whenever they want. And that's an easy answer. But that, that's not really how it works though, because registries don't advertise the version of the spec they implement and clients don't look it up before they talk to them. Right, sure. It's much more of a general, you push and pull things and over time and you want it to continue the things that you used to do to continue working and and so on. So I'm not sure that that's a really helpful view on, on the- and That's the one of the reasons why we've talked about doing the extensions thing or shoving a version into existing APIs that unfortunately folks have already worked around. So, um, and I see that Josh has his hand up. I, I just doing a time check for four minutes till a lot of good discussion. Um, and I don't think we actually got into all the different topics, but um the the this one of the things that i'd like to see an action item on and i'd like for it to not be me um is where best to put kind of a tracker for the uh kind of like these proposals in a place effectively for nisha's diagram to live uh so that as as we're diving into all these different things and like particular fields and use cases and otherwise that we can at least track and roll up how these things are related. Uh, does anybody have a particular opinion or want to take an action to like land land that somewhere? Is this sort of like a like, like a survey of reference implementation options with pretty pictures and description? It, to some extent, it, it, it relies on even the thing that's open, the task that's open on Phil of like this kind of working group piece that mm -hmm. we've added going on of like, here's all the different working groups that are going and here's how to get involved in them. To some extent it relate, relate, relates to that, but now that we're having new verbiage around that, there, there are and have been existing, you know, groups and proposals and veins of thought that do need to get aggregated up into that so folks can cleanly discover those and see how they relate. And I'd like uh, that, I'd like to see that somewhere. One suggestion that came from some of our discussion about kind of containers in HPC is that it would be really nice to have something along the lines of like an RFC document for a lot of the specs. And if we do have that, that could be associated with working groups and even things in progress, but that would be a nice place where you could put diagrams and whatnot. I like that, Vanessa. Um, 
and I'll add that to the notes. Okay. Um, we can tease that out. I'll, I'll, I'll type up some notes here in the, the HackMD. Uh, Josh, you had your hand up first. Yeah, I've never seen this feature work as expected. But um, so there's some conversation in the chat a little bit ago. Um, and I actually had just put something in the in the agenda about this and sent a Slack message about a month ago. Uh, I would love to do an in-person thing. I don't think the KubeCon uh, is enough. Uh, one hour at KubeCon is enough time. I would love to do a real conference for OCI. And I think that it would, you know, we have these discussions um, and we seem like we're making a lot of great progress and then the call ends and we never talk about it again. And I know COVID is an issue and all that, but um, I, if anyone can help me, I'd love to help organize something like that maybe in the winter after things are more open, but. Um, yeah. Well, we actually did do something like that years ago. I'm just now remembering when we went to the IBM office in San Francisco and we had a powwow and it was like, uh, effectively was like a mini conf of about 15 of us. It, I mean, just like seeing Nisha's thing uh, just makes me think of like whiteboards and- We need a whiteboard. Yeah, so yep. um, it's been too long and I was never a part of this group when we did this and I've only been involved pretty much since just before COVID. So um, anyway, yeah, reach out. Are you an OCI you COVID can, baby? I, <laughs> I'm not gonna respond to that. Um, that's good. No, I, I'm, I'm game, game for that. And I think at some point somebody actually mentioned even something in like East Coast, Asheville is pretty central to a few of us and I'm down for that. Um, Sarah did have her hands up and lowered it, but it's good, whatever. Um, it was just about right. wrapping up and making sure we oh, okay. had specific things to do. There you go, okay. Um, so yeah, I, 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 I feel folks' tensions and i um, glad that folks will actually bring these, these topics up to conversation points. Um, so for the sake of sounding redundant, uh, we are all here to be on the same side of the table. So uh, do keep that in mind. Um, and uh, thankfully we all do hold each other to kind of a, the code of participation that was the reason and how this group ever even got fund, uh, founded uh, and funded, I guess. But um, no, I'm glad, I'm glad you're all here. So keep raising topics and we'll actually work forward together. So, thank you everybody for joining. Yeah. Thanks, Thanks everybody. Folks. Thanks everyone. Thank Bye, guys.